Hi planner friends, it's Marsha with Buy Sell Plan. Um, as you can see, I don't have a planner that I'm going to be showing in any shape or form <laughs> in this video. I'm going to do my nails and since I've been uh, asked quite a few times, you know, what my secret is, how do I do my nails, all that stuff, I figured, well, since I have to do my nails anyways, I may as well film it. So I'm going to do a solid color. I don't like to do a French manicure unless all of my nails are the same length, which they kind of are now, but this one broke a week ago, I think. So I trimmed them all down, um, but I didn't trim them all like really short. So this one's just a little bit um, shorter. So I'm gonna wait till that grows a little bit more and then I'll file them all, all down until they match. And then I'll get back into doing my French manicure, which is my favorite. It is more time consuming because it's multiple coats. So I'm just going to do something quick. Um, yeah, so I got to decide which color. I'm really into these pastel kind of muted tones. I haven't used, done this one in a while, so I think I'm going to do this one. Um, my favorite bland, brands are OPI, Orly, and um, another one called, oh gosh, what's the name of it? I forget. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when I remember, if I remember. But anyhow, so this one is probably th three years old and it's still going strong. It is still going strong. So yeah, that's a good one. This one is OPI and it's called Don't Bossa Nova Me Around. I always joke with my husband. I'm like, I want that job where I get to name nail polishes. Uh, this one is Orly and it's Cake Pop. So I haven't done this one in a while. So I'm going to do this one. I think last summer was the last time I used this one. And this is about a year, a little over a year old. And it's still going strong. So what I do is, once I take off my nail polish, if there's any edges um, that are, you know, that need to be filed down and to be smooth, I do that with this file and if there's any, I like my nails square. So if there are any that need to be more square, I file them down. And then on the nail beds uh, to remove any imperfections, I buff them. So I just have those out just in case I need them. Oh, my nail polish made quite a mess. So first things first, I'm going to remove the polish. So I like to get a good soak. And, you know, I'm sure if you've worn nail polish before, you've taken nail polish off. All you do is just keep rubbing until, until it all comes off. I prefer, I don't like the cotton balls. I like the cotton pads. I feel these do a better job for me. So that's what I use. And I do my own, I grow my own nails. I do not have gel nails or... Uh, I don't know what the other kinds are, acrylic. Um, I've been blessed with strong nails that grow and my nails grow really fast. And it's, what's interesting is I have four sisters and I'm the only one that has, that can grow my nails really long and they grow really strong. So I'm very blessed about that. Now, mind you, all but one of my sisters got height. I'm uh, one of the shortest. I'm five foot two. I have a sister that's five foot one or five, yeah, five foot one. And then all my other sisters are like five foot five or taller. Um, yeah. And I would like to say that most of them got the bigger boobs. <laughs> Sorry if that's too much. TMI. Too much information. So because I use this uh, one right here, it's a super gloss. I think I forgot to show you what those were and what they do, which I will, I will tell you about them. They have a tiny bit of a glitter to them. So therefore it takes longer or takes more effort 
um, to get the polish off than if I were using just a regular top coat. But I find with a regular top coat, the polish doesn't last as long and um, they chip. They chip a lot easier and they chip a lot sooner. So when did I do my nails last? Today is Sunday, so I either did my nails seven or eight days ago and they just started chipping. So when I do my nails, they last, they typically can last a good two or good week. Um, sometimes about a week and a half. It depends on how often I do dishes or am doing things with my hands. So if I, I'm not doing a whole lot of dishes in a particular week or, you know, a lot of housework and, you know, things around the house, then my nail polish can last up to two weeks. with how I paint them, which I will show you. And um, so years ago, 20 something years ago, 20 what? I've been with my husband for 26 years. I'm trying to remember if I was with him at the time. I don't know if I, well, maybe I was. So we'll say around 26 years ago, one of my best friends was going to school to be an esthetician. And so, during her, I think it was like a good week of kind of like practical exams where they had to do a lot of pedicures and facials and manicures with their teacher watching them um, and, you know, to grade them. So anyways, I was her guinea pig that week and it was amazing. So I learned a lot of tricks on how to do like beauty kind of stuff just from being and then here, like being there when the teacher would give feedback uh, was awesome. I learned a lot. So I usually use one cotton pad per hand to make sure that I get a good amount. So as you can see, this one is starting to chip. You can see that it's like chipping there. And then when, as the nails grow, um, because I do bring it pretty much right down to the cuticle line. So that's when, you know, it's a, it's a sign that like, that you have to, uh, that you have to take off the polish and Start again. I um, I have done shellac a couple times where they put shellac over top of your natural nail. Actually, I've done it probably five times total over the last six years. Um, not very often, but boy, do actually no. I, I I went through a period of I don't know I think maybe four months of of going in every three weeks and getting it done. So right, okay. So if you include that, it's been more than five times. But anyways, um, but what I found was since doing the shellac, it's made two of my nails a little bit more weak in certain areas. I'll show you. And and I, I mean maybe it's not due to the shellac but that's when I noticed it starting was once I started to do shellac. And um, what I have found was this nail and this nail, it, it's more bendy on the inside, whereas the other side is strong. Like all my nails are very strong. They don't really bend, but this one here on the inside it's more bendy and that one really, really weird. So I don't do shellac anymore. So yes, it is a pain to do my nails. And you know what I find if I don't do nail polish, my nails will still grow, but they break easier, believe it or not. Like let's say I'm not really paying attention and I go to open something, a drawer of some, you know, maybe, maybe I haven't, um, I maybe I wash my hands and I haven't dried my hands enough and then I go to open a drawer and my hand slips I can have a nail like break right off but if I'm wearing nail polish um, it doesn't it doesn't happen as easily so you very rarely will catch me with no with no polish very very rarely I just like how my hands look with nail polish. 
and yeah, I just like how my nails, my hands look with nail polish. All right, good enough, good enough. Okay, so now I just do a little inspection here, see if they really need any buffing. They don't feel rough. They actually feel pretty smooth. I'm gonna do this one because this one tends to right here, I don't know if you can see that I have a bit of a, like a line there, just the, the it's like there's a ridge. So in this, it, this one here gets like it splits and therefore that's typically where my nail polish will start to split the most. So I just do a little, just a little buff on that particular spot on the edge and right on top. Okay, so first you do like the roughest then you do the, the second roughest. So this is like file nail edge and then removing ridges. And then this smooths it out and this buffs it out. This gives you the shine. So we don't spend a whole lot of time on this just enough to kind of prep it for polish. The hairs are fine actually. And then if there's any cuticles that need to be pushed back, I just do, I just use my fingernail. I don't really need to use like a cuticle pusher. I don't get into fancy stuff like that. Um, of course, when I go to get, I don't, I don't go very often to do manicures because I honestly feel that I do a better job than they do because when they file my nails, I tell them I want them square. And then when I get home, I'm like, oh, they're not, they're kind of crooked. They're not completely square. So I just, I prefer to do it myself. But the odd time that I'm like, I just couldn't be bothered. I'm gonna go and treat myself, get a, a manicure and a pedicure. Um, they do use the cuticle pushers and they're fancy tools. But the way I do it, I feel, is good enough. Good enough. I've been doing my nails myself since I was about 13 years old. Funny story, I used to bite my nails when I was younger. And I remember watching a talk show. Couldn't tell you what talk show it was. I couldn't even tell you what celebrity was on but she had a French manicure. Her nails were long and she had a French manicure. I was about 12 or 13 and I remember loving her nails. And I remember like thinking, how can I do that? So I just started growing my nails and you know, 13, start getting interested in makeup and nail polish and things like that. And I'd go and buy my nail polish from the drugstore, do my own nails and experiment. And yeah, so I've been doing my own nails for so long. I have a steady hand. People ask me a lot, like, how do you do, because I'm right-handed, so how do you do your right hand when you're holding the, the brush with your left? And I just, I can do it really well. I can't write with my left. So you can see that there's some unevenness there. And if I don't take care of that, it'll get caught on something and then my nail will, will break. So I just file that down. Um, yeah, but I can't write with my left hand. Oh my God, like, you kidding? You should see how messy it is. But for some reason I can do my nails. Funny enough. Okay, that is good. Oh, that could use a little smoothening out. So yeah, you just give them like a once over just to make sure that everything is good. Okay, now I'm just checking to make sure that they're square. I mean, they're pretty good. I'm not gonna bother with it too much because I don't want this to take a long time. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go wash my hands because of the nail polish remover, because once I do my nail polish, I won't really be getting my hands wet for a few hours. So I'm gonna wash my hands now so that they don't have the nail polish remover on them and then I will get to work. I'm gonna go throw this in the garbage too. So I'll be back, hang tight. I'm back. I also, if you notice I don't have pink sleeves, I put on a t-shirt because I was getting warm and I don't wanna be messing with putting on a t-shirt once my nails are wet. So, I'm just gonna finish that one there. It's, could be a bit smoother. Okay, so this here is called American Classics Bridge the Ridge. It's a ridge filling base coat. So I discovered this years ago when I went into a beauty supply store locally and I thought, well, what is that? And then I started using it and I use, that's, that's what like, I have to use this now. So basically what it does is it makes your nail smooth if you have any imperfections. Now I buff my nails, so they're pretty smooth. I could put nail polish right on top. Um, but since I started to use this, I just, I don't know. I just, I'm in such the habit that that's what I do. But I mean, you don't have to use that. So if you're doing your own nails, you can certainly just apply your nail polish directly to your nail. And they say that you want to do a base coat because it helps the nail polish adhere to it in case you have any oils or anything on your nail beds but um yeah I just I use it regardless because I think it's a great product and it just makes everything smooth it dries matte so it won't be shiny so I got some on the skin so I have, th this is like really old from when I did real estate school. I just kept this and you can see the nail polish all around the edges. That's what I use this for to get rid of any nail polish that I get on the side that goes onto my skin. And then when I'm testing out now, like colors to see how they look and if I put sparkles on them or whatever, it's kind of like my little, um, what are, you know, the artists have that thing they hold in their hand with all their paint on it. That's, what's that called? Anyways, that's what I use this for. I have a couple of them. Oh my God, I had three of them. So yeah, you can see the nail polish all around. I don't use this one as much. So here, I got, got a fresh one. But anyways, that's what these are for. So I think when you're doing your own nails, it's good to have something like that. When you go to get your nails done at the salon, they usually use their own fingernail to get rid of them or they use like some sort of a tool, but because when you're doing your own nails, they, you know, your thumbnails will be wet or your other nails will be wet, so you can't really get in there. So that's my advice. But anyhow, so you can see it dries pretty quickly. I mean, it's still drying. So basically when all the shine is gone, that's when you know it's pretty dry. So just to kind of recap what I do, take the nail polish off, buff them if needed, do any type of filing that's needed, wash my hands because after you do your nails, you really shouldn't get them wet for at least three hours. Um, so I wash my hands because I want all the nail polish remover off and I want my, my hands to be clean and my nails to be clean. And then... I use this American Classics Bridge the Ridge Ridge Filling Base Coat. Does I say filling? Yes. Even though I have glasses on, that's still pretty tiny. Um, so that's what it is. The serial number, I think that's what that is. No, that's not. A, that's the serial number. So it's number 507035. Okay, so that's what I use first. So now I'm done with this. So I will put that in my little bin. And then next will be my color. And then when I'm finished my color, I do the American Classic, so same brand. This is super gloss for a dazzling effect. So it has a teeny, very subtle kind of um, sparkle, which I don't mind regardless of what color I put on. It's so subtle, you can't really see it. But I'm telling you, this stuff is amazing. So it's number 507850. 
it's amazing. My polish lasts probably twice as long because when I use regular, like I, I, I could get like a chip in my nail after one day, two days. Whereas this, it's a good, you know, good seven days. So I love it. And um, yeah. So what I'll be doing in between as the coats are drying, dry, drying, I will speed it up because I mean, this could take a while and I'll just be talking for like an hour. So I'll just speed it up and then um, bring you back in when I'm ready to put the next coat on. Okay, it is dry. Yeah, it is dry. So now I'm gonna do this color here called Cake Pop by Orly. Give it a little shake. Okay, so now what I do when I get the, depending on how full the bottle is, if it's brand new, like when you, if you lift it up and start painting right away, you're gonna get all the polish on the wand and it's all gonna come down in a clump. So I usually just um, like do this, just to get it all, get it all off of the actual wand. And then I take my time when I'm bringing it out. So then that way I'm not getting a big, you know, a big gush of nail polish that will um, spill onto my nail. Okay, so my trick and what I learned from being the guinea pig when my friend went through school is you do the tip first with every coat. You do the tip first with every coat and then you go across, okay? And then you start at the cuticle and go up. I think I'm, this one is like, I don't know how many more I'm gonna get out of this one. I think I got this one about a year ago and I used it so much that I think it might almost be empty. I hope they still have this one. There's nothing worse than a color that you love and that you use a lot and it was a limited edition. That has happened to me. So there you go, that's one coat. I'll probably, I'll definitely do two coats. It might be three, because I really don't like when you can see where the nail bed and the white part, like the smile line, I don't like when you can see that through the polish when I'm doing a solid color. So I'm looking in to see how much is in there. Like I, like I can see, like I could tell. Okay, so now the next nail. So I'm gonna do this all the way along. I'm just gonna do the tip of the nail first. Get a nice, good coat. Okay, and then I will start at the cuticle. So I can do this quite a bit of polish on there. So I'm just getting as much off as possible before applying. And I like to get as close to the cuticle as I can, but I don't like it actually touching. And I get as close to the edge as possible too without getting any on my skin. And you can see that I didn't, if you can see that, it's very small. I didn't completely get all of the nail, but that doesn't bother me because, I mean, I'm not gonna see it. Who's like, who's gonna see it, right? And these days, I'm just doing my nails for me because I, I'm not really leaving the house. We're in lockdown where I am, so stay at home order. We're not going out unless we absolutely have to. And um, so I'm not really seeing people in person. So no one's really seeing my nails anyways. But I just do this for me because it makes me feel good. I always have to have nail polish on my toes and my fingers. That's all I'm gonna do there. I love this color. It's called Cake Pop, but it reminds me of cotton candy. It's a very pretty, very pastel light pink, which I absolutely love. I try to be, I try to go as light as I can on the tip because otherwise nail polish gets on the other side. Which is, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but I'd rather, 
I'd rather not. Not bad for my first hand. I had got a tiny little bit of polish on that side. And, and that was it actually. That's on my nail. It looked like it was on my skin, but it's not. So not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Okay, so now, so now you can see that was my right hand. So that was the easy side. Now I have to use my left hand to do my right hand. Um, but I like to think that I have mastered this. It's just knowing how to hold the brush. And I turn my finger as I'm going to kind of help it along. I don't have as much polish, so this is not giving me the coverage. That I prefer. But you know what? I'm not going to mess with it. Looks like I got a tiny bit on my cuticle. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to try and be as precise as I can. Oh no, I didn't get any on my cuticle. That's weird. Maybe that's some of the ridge filler that I got on my cuticle. It looks kind of white. I thought maybe it's just my, my eyes playing tricks on me. So I got quite a bit of nail polish on this, this uh, finger here. So that's okay. I mean, it's not as perfect as I would like it to look because you can see there's also a little bit on my cuticle. I have, I have this thing with the nail polish around my cuticle. I want it to be perfectly round, just above. I don't want it touching the cuticle. I want it just above. So when I get it on the cuticle, it drives me nuts because then it's hard to, almost, it's hard to um, remove it without changing the shape, but okay, I did pretty good there. I did pretty good. So that's one coat done. Oh, isn't it so pretty? I love this color so much. Ugh, that's the thing with these fingers here. Do you, is this, is it just me or is this how it is on everybody's um, ring finger where you, where you have like a little, oh, look at me making a mess here. You have a little more skin on the side. It's almost like it's um, higher than the rest and nail pol it's easier for nail polish to get on there. So even though I did this already, okay, that's, that's okay. That's okay. So now I sit and I wait. So normally what I do when I do my nails, I'm either watching TV, like I'll watch a show. Um, that's usually what I do. Actually, I watch a show or let's say I'm doing a FaceTime with like one of my sisters. We're just chatting away and I'm doing my nails while I'm on the phone. Um, yeah, because otherwise I can't just sit here and just stare at the wall while my nails are drying. So I'm usually doing something while I do my nails. Um, yeah, that's what I do. So I'll be back when it's time for the second coat. I think it's dry. So how I tell is at, like at first, just very lightly with one of my fingers, I will um, go over the nail very, very, very lightly. So if it feels smooth and doesn't feel tacky, then I'll apply a little bit of pressure. And if I can see my thumbprint, then I know it's not ready. So if I do that and I see my thumbprint, I do it very lightly, like very, very gentle. If I do see any sign of a thumbprint, then very gently, I just go like this again and smoothen it out and then I wait. But if I can push down pretty hard and there's no thumbprint, then I'm, I'm good to do my next coat. Tiny, tiny little bit of a, of a print there, like not too worried about that. Um, of course, this side will dry faster because I did that side first. The thicker your coat, 
then the longer it will take to dry. So this one is a lit, just, yeah, you can, you can see my thumbprint in there a tiny bit. So then I smooth it out and then we're good. It's very, very subtle, like a little bit tacky, but not, it's not too bad. So I'm going to start on this side while I'm waiting for this side to completely dry. So I'm going to speed this part up. So basically I'm going to do the same thing, just the tips, a little bit along the edge and then cuticle to tip. I'm gonna do that on each finger. Coat number two is done. I don't think I'm gonna need another one. This is pretty good. I see one tiny imperfection on that nail, but you know what? Once I put this on, I won't notice it anymore. Just a little, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's so, it's like microscopic almost, but it's almost like a little, nick it's not it's not like 100 percent smooth there i don't know if you can see that it's like right there but i'm not gonna get too fussy about it so the the key is when you do your second coat is to retrace your steps so that you don't have because i've done that before where the second coat goes farther than the first so you can tell that it's not even at the cuticle line so yeah, it's just, it takes concentration and I definitely have to wear my readers over top of my contact lenses <laughs> to make sure that I can see because it's so, so intricate. All right, that nail's completely dry. So is that one. Yeah, these are good now. Ah, oh, itchy ear. Okay, now I'm gonna do the second side. All right, second coat on the right hand is done. I am happy with that. Very happy with that, actually. Yeah. What do you think? Such a pretty color. I love it. It's so feminine. It's perfect for spring. I really don't like how... I'm going to have to, uh, I might take, I have like an old um, makeup brush, like a, you know, like you put um, like detail eyeshadow on and then I just dip it in nail polish remover and then I just get in there with the brush and just remove any imperfections, but I'm going to wait until my nails are dry. Anyways, I'm going to wait for this to dry and then I'll be back to do the final step. They're pretty much dry. I feel like it's been about 20 minutes easily. Yeah, about 20, 25 minutes since I put the second coat on. These two are still a little, like I can touch them and they're fine, but you probably can't see that. But if I put, if I put pressure, you can very faintly see my thumbprint, even more so on that one. So, I'm going to start on this hand to doing my final coat. We'll see how these two are by the time I get there. So again, I'm using the American Classics Super Gloss Dazzling Effect Anti-Fade Top Coat. Okay, so I do the exact same thing that I've been doing all along. First, I do the tips and then I start at the cuticle and do the full nail and make sure I get good coverage and I do the edge or the, yeah, the edge. So just to show you, it has a slight sparkle, but it's so subtle. I don't even think like only because I know it has a sparkle, do I see it? If I didn't know and someone else was wearing this, I, I might not notice, but, um, but I like it. I like the sparkle. So I'm doing just the tip here. And then I go to the cuticle. Full coverage. And then the edge. Okay, so the last nail, let's see how we're doing here. 
still a little bit tacky. Ah, it's very frustrating. It's frustrating when they don't all dry at the same speed. Um, yeah, so we'll just have to wait just a little bit longer. I'm gonna blow on my nails. I don't have the fancy machine, you know, when you're at the, at the nail salon, you put your hands under the UV lights and it dries them. I don't have that. I don't even know if that's good for you with the UV lights going on your skin. Um, anyways, sometimes if it just seems to be taking forever, then I'll put the top coat on anyways, and then it seems to kind of bind with it and dry with the top coat. Um, but yeah, that, that's a little too tacky for me. Um, and I typically do my nails at night. I don't do them during the day because I have a lot of things I need to do through the day. Um, and I don't wanna risk my nails getting um, messed up, you know, from if I'm doing dishes or I'm preparing food or planning or having to do stuff on the computer where I'm typing on my keyboard. So I wait until all of that is done. So normally this will be maybe five hours before going to bed, three to five hours. So sometimes if I have a tacky nail and then I still put the clear coat on and even though it appears dry and there's no like fingerprint on it before I go to bed, um, sometimes I wake up and there's imperfections in it from sleeping which I really don't like. So I'm gonna wait this out. Alrighty, so I will be back once it is dry. So we're about 10 minutes later and it's much better. It's much better. So I am going to finally do my top coat on this last nail and that will be all. If you can hear voices, it's my son and his girlfriend. I don't know what they're doing in the kitchen. I probably don't want to know because usually when they're done in the kitchen, it looks like a hurricane went through. Anyways, that that's it. That's how I do my nails. That's my solid, when I do a solid color, um, that's how I do my nails. I hope you found that enjoyable. Nothing fancy, pretty simple. And um, I quite enjoy doing my nails. I find it relaxing, especially because I'm doing something else. I'm usually watching. Sometimes I'll watch some planner videos on YouTube or I'll watch a show on Netflix or, you know, whether it be on my iPad at my desk or I'm on the couch, um, you know, whatever, or a movie. And it's just enjoyable and relaxing. And, um, and I really enjoy it. So let me know if you like this video, if you'd like to see more of the, these type, types of videos. I know it's not planning related, but um, I do schedule to do my nails. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I find, you know, having nice nails or they don't have to be long, you know, but just nicely painted nails I find is professional and it looks nice and especially good, to, you know, kind of to match your outfit. Right? I wear a lot of light pastel -y colors. So um, once this nail grows a little bit, I'll be getting back into the French manicure. Let me know if you would like to see me um, do a French manicure on my nails. I'd be happy to do that for you. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new here, most of my videos are on functional planning using the Franklin Planner system. And every now and then I'll throw in a little something different. I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. Thanks again for watching, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.